here. Oh, fantastic. Uh, just a second. Okay, five minutes, please go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, fellow Democrats, and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Leslie Gutierrez, and I'm running for Superior Court Judge in seat number 90. And the reason why I'm running is because I care about the community and I want to help people. I've been a prosecutor for the past decade, but before that, I was a defense attorney. So I've worked on both sides of the criminal judicial system. I've extended for the Federal Public Defender's Office when I was in uh, law school. I also extended for a federal judge, Judge Pregerson, uh, on the, I'm sorry, <clears throat> in downtown LA. So I've worked on all sides of the criminal justice system. And I understand the profound impact and the life-changing consequences of the contact with the criminal justice, justice system. And that's why I approach my cases with common sense. Uh, I've been a filer in the office uh, as a district attorney, which is someone who reviews cases. And it, I, I think that they're the gatekeepers of justice because we decide if a case should be filed or not. Um, I've had cases brought to me that were ridiculous, like an 18 year old kid who had stolen a 90, 99 cents bag of Cheetos from the 7-Eleven. And while it was a petty theft and the elements could be proved, that's not a case that should have been in the criminal justice system. And I understand that because of my knowledge of all sides of the criminal justice system. So I just declined that case and did not file it. I also don't believe in ruining people's financially. So when I was a misdemeanor attorney, I didn't impose fines because I was at the time living on my own with a DA salary, which was not that high, but definitely a lot more than minimum wage. And I always thought I wouldn't be able to afford this. So I just stopped doing it because I thought it would be a revolving door. They don't pay the fine, they have to come back into court and they get punished again. So I just didn't do it. Um, I also am known for my common sense. Just this week, I was in a court I had to sub in in a misdemeanor court because the misdemeanor uh, DA called in and the judge was telling us a story about a ridiculous case and he looked at me and he goes, you would have dismissed it. And he was right, I would have because I do what's right. I have courage. I don't care what people think about me. I will do what's right, no matter the cost. Um, I understand the importance of mental health. My uncle, uh, unfortunately, is bipolar and he's had several incidents and I've always thanked God that he never made it into the criminal justice system. So I understand that. Um, currently, I prosecute um, complex and sensitive felonies. I'm in a unit that prosecutes child molestation, child murder, uh, domestic violence murder. I've done rapes, uh, elder sexual and uh, physical abuse. The last one I've done was an 85 year old woman um, who was raped and she had dementia. So I had to use a lot of gentle skills um, to help her through it. Um, I know what it's like to hold a five-year-old's hands and have them go and testify against their father because they were molested. So I understand the victim's trauma, uh, but whether you're a defendant, a victim, a witness, or a member of the general public, in my court, you will be treated with respect. You will be treated with compassion. Your rights will be respected. You will be treated with empathy. You will be heard. You will be treated equitably, fairly, and humanly. Judges, criminal defense attorneys, including public defenders, prosecutors, members of the public, they're supporting me because they recognize that I'm a good lawyer, but they also recognize that I'm a good human being. They appreciate my legal skills, they appreciate my ethics and fairness, and they appreciate the respect that I show to everyone, including the defendants and their families, because I understand that it's hard for families to come in and see their loved ones in custody. Um, on a personal level, my family is originally from Morocco. My grandma was a child worker at nine years old. My grandpa was a plumber. They fled Morocco to France, which is where I'm from, because of anti-Semitism. My mom was two years old. She was taken in by DCFS in France because they didn't have the money to support her. Um, she was undocumented until she was an adult. I was myself born and raised in France, and I moved from France because of the anti-Semitism that I was the victim of in France. 
I understand what it's like to be victimized. I've been the victim of a violent crime. Uh, when I came here, I came here by myself and it was hard. English was not my first language. I had to work a lot. After a few years, I put myself through law school with loans and by working during the day and going to school at night. I worked incredibly hard and I graduated at the first in the top 1% of my law school. Um, I, 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 I hate to cut you off there, but I'm afraid that that I have to. Thank you, Clark. Thank you for, for coming and sharing your, your story. Um, so last but not least, uh, uh, we have uh, Georgia Huerta. Uh, Georgia, yes. still with us? Oh, great. Yes, I let, am. let me spotlight you. Um, 